You can turn your King James Bible to the book of Nehemiah, chapter 13. This will be the last of the five studies that I've done on this key to understanding the end times. It's the Jews and the Catholics working together. And um, we're going to be talking today about the coming Kabbalistic kingdom. Down through the millennia that the Jews were on the earth, as they departed over and over from God, and they mingled themselves with other people, um, outlandish women, strange women and things, those other people turned away the hearts of the Jews to other gods and other systems and, and practices that are occult. And we're going to see that in this study. I'm going to prove it to you. And because of this, they've picked up a lot of ancient occult, esoteric type wisdom, and they this is how they gauge their future. And that's why they're in such trouble. That's why there's going to be the time of Jacob's trouble. Not for the church. But uh, Nehemiah chapter 13, we'll begin in verse 23. And read down to verse 27. In those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, of Ammon, and of Moab. And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod, and could not speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people. And I contended with them, and cursed them, and smote certain of them, and plucked off their hair, and made them swear by God, saying, Ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons, or for yourselves. Okay, now, if it's just about idol worship, if that's all that's being condemned here, interracial marriage is fine, but idol worship is wrong, then why not say you can marry, but just don't worship their gods? It's not what it's saying. It's saying don't marry them. I mean, how can you claim, like I said in the last video, how can you claim tribal inheritance? I'm from the tribe of Judah. I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. I'm from the tribe of Issachar or whatever. How can you claim that if you're married, interracially married with other people? That's what's going on here. That's what's being condemned. And that's what's happening right now. It's a horrible sin. Verse 26, Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him, who was beloved of his God, and God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause to sin. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil, great evil, to transgress against our God in marrying strange wives? It's a great evil. Some people still don't get it. Well, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 8. Ezekiel chapter 8, and we're going to see what happened here, how they're marrying strange wives, and then it starts to mess them up, and they start to get into weird occult practices. Ezekiel chapter 8, beginning in verse 1. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in mine house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. Then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his loins even downward, fire, and from his loins even upward, as the collar, or as the appearance of brightness, as the collar of amber. And he put forth the form of an hand, and took me by a lock of mine head, and the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven, and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north, which was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy." Hmm, the image of jealousy. Kind of sounds like the whole thing of the image of the beast. Huh. God is a jealous God. He won't give his glory to another. And yet the Antichrist sits himself in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Hmm. Interesting. Verse 4. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there, according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. Huh. I have to wonder if it's an obelisk, an Egyptian obelisk, like the Vatican has out in front of it, you know? Hmm. He said furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary? But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations." And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things and abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel, 
portrayed upon the walls round about. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel, and in the midst of them stood Jeazaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Just exactly like the Catholic priests do. The thing with their incense, doing the thing like that. I wonder where they learned that from. Hmm, probably from Ahab is where Jezebel got that practice. Verse 12. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, The Lord seeth us not, the Lord hath forsaken the earth. It's what Jews believe today. The vast majority of these Jewish people, um, papal union especially, the ones that serve the Pope, they don't believe that God exists. It's just kind of a, oh, you know, lucky charm type of thing or something. Verse 13. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east, and they worshiped the sun toward the east. Did you know that's uh, what the Freemasons do? Their temples are oriented towards the east? Huh. You mean it's a pagan thing for people to face a certain direction on the earth and worship a certain way? Hmm. Kind of like the Muslim call to prayer? Nothing like that. <laughs> Islam, you know what Islam is? Islam is a cheap ripoff of both Judaism and Catholicism. That's what it is. Just a fake, another fake cult. And the Jews eventually, you know, they'll, they'll conspire with the Catholics and they'll have their final crusade to kill all the Muslims off. They already have plans for it. The Winslow plan and everything else. Verse 17. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger, and lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in fury, mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. The time of Jacob's trouble. That's what it's heading towards. Again, it makes no sense at all. You want to debate the pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, pre-wrath, all that. It doesn't make any sense at all for the church to go into a future time period where they have to be tried and bad things happen to them. Um, unless you're that rotten of a professing Christian, well, I'm sorry to hear that. But as for me and my house, we're not doing the things that the Lord would have to punish by destroying the whole earth to punish us for our wickedness. But the Jews and the Catholics are. Because that's what the end times is about. You get it? You say, what? Well, I, I don't know. I don't, don't agree with that. Okay, then let's go to the uh, Catechism of the Catholic Church. I have my newer one someplace, but I don't know where it's at right now. I think I left it at the left it at home. But um, page one ninety nine, number seven fifty nine. Here it says, uh, uh, the Eternal Father, in accordance with the utter Utterly gratuitous and mysterious design of his wisdom and goodness created the whole universe and chose to raise up men to share in his own divine life, uh, to which he calls all men in his Son. The Father determined to call together in a holy church those who should believe in Christ. Now here's where it gets interesting. This family of God is gradually formed and takes shape during the stages of human history in keeping with the Father's plan. In fact, already present in figures at the beginning... Of the world, that this church was prepared in marvelous fashion in the history of the people of Israel and the old alliance. The old alliance? I mean, between the Jews and the Catholics? Established in this last age of the world and made manifest in the outpouring of the Spirit, it will be brought to glorious completion at the end of time. There you have it. Roman Catholic Catechism. The old alliance established in this 
last age of the world and made manifest in the outpouring of the Spirit, it will be brought to glorious completion at the end of time. Do they admit it? Yes, they do. Number 763. It was the Son's task to accomplish the Father's plan of salvation in the fullness of time. Its accomplishment was the reason for His being sent. The Lord Jesus inaugurated His church by preaching the good news that is the coming of the reign of God promised over the ages in the Scriptures. To fulfill the Father's will, Christ ushered in the kingdom of heaven on earth. No, He didn't. <laughs> no, He didn't. There's no millennial kingdom right now, unless you're a Catholic. Christ ushered in the kingdom of heaven on earth. The church is the reign of Christ already present in mystery. Mm -hmm. The old alliance is there, and it's ushered in the kingdom of heaven on the earth. Huh. Very interesting. Now I'm going to show you some pictures about the Kabbalah. Here we have, a, I have them printed out here, but I'll put a collar photo up for you. Um, here we have, I'll just do it this way, Abba and Alma, the two different pillars like that right there. Let me put it up on the screen for you in collar so you can see this better. Abba, the wisdom, father there of the word. Um, and then you have the female over there, the Alma. Do you ever go to a college and you have your alma mater? Yeah, okay. Hmm. How about that? And it goes in and you can have the guy there in the middle. You know, he's the synth synthesis, I guess, from the thesis and, ant and antithesis. And what do you have down at the bottom there? You have Zion, the kingdom, the bride, the queen, the Asaya world of action there or whatever. Huh. You mean to tell me that you have... Ahab and Jezebel time trying to create a new type of man that culminates in a kingdom? Huh. The old alliance coming together? No, no, come on. Yeah, yeah. The Jews call it the uh um oh I can't think of what the thing's called. Jewish utopia. That's what it's called, yeah that they'll have their Messiah will come and we're going to bring our Messiah to power and everything and then we'll have the Jewish utopia. I get I get real worried when I see professing Christians and they have to change the words of the King James Bible to Hebrew type words. Yeshua and, and Yahweh and all this other stuff and, and we do Shabbat and all. Gentiles ought not to be changing uh, English words to Hebrew words. A little creepy. But here we have the Tree of Life, this big chart here. Again, I'll have to put this up on screen. But um, in tarot, tarot, the tarot cards, you have different things there. And you have, again, you have the, the left pillar, the right pillar, and then the synthesis in the middle. Here you have uh, 10 Sephiroth's names, the 10 divine names of archangels. Um, and it goes down. And what's at the bottom there? Uh, yeah, that's right. Kingdom. The kingdom again down at the bottom. And then you have the whole person, the human body, the seven planes, the seven chakras. Uh, again, occultism, Satanism is what this whole thing is about. But the one that you want to pay real close attention to is right here. The Tetragrammaton, the sacred name of God, not pronounced, three pillars, the symbol of intelligence, Masonic tradition. You have the severity pillar here, the Boaz, represented by water. And then you have the mercy, Jachin, fire over here. So the right pillar and the left pillar. And if you look at a Masonic Lodge, you'll see those two pillars that they have them there by the altar. But here's the interesting thing. Who was uh, given this wisdom according to Masonic tradition? That would have been King Solomon. When you go through the Master Mason degree and they talk about Solomon, the building of Solomon's temple and everything, and they, they go through and they take the initiate and they're going around trying to show him the secrets and then he gets whacked on the head by the three ruffians and... They accost him and then they whack him on the head and then they bury him in the rubble and all this other stuff. Um, all that whole weird, it's, it's actually on YouTube. You can watch the whole stupid thing, um, the whole ceremony. And uh, some guy snuck in a hidden camera and filmed the whole thing. It's, I guess it's still up. I don't really know for sure. But, um, but the whole point is here, you have two different pillars. 
Solomon's temple there, but there's the two pillars of Boaz and Jachin. Hmm. Now, if I was a conspiracy guy, you know how I feel about conspiracies. I would have to question and wonder about a certain false preacher that I've exposed many times over the years. Um, we have a great relationship, him and me. He, he just loves the work that I do. I uh, still get people saying, you know, he, he hates you a lot, Brother Brian. Yeah, I know. Um, Steven Anderson, uh, Tempe, Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, wherever he's at right now, I don't know. I guess he's still running the same cult down there. But um, <clears throat> he fell apart after, you know, the scamdemic thing came out. He went along with it. People disagreed with that. And then it came out that his sons were perverts. We'll talk more about that here in a minute. But um, it just so happened, just by sheer coincidence, that his first son was named Solomon. Hmm. So that doesn't mean anything. It's okay. But then he had twins after that. And one was named Boaz and the other was named Jachin. Hmm. Only Jachin died. Huh. So the one that's severity, Boaz, lived. The one that's mercy, Jachin, died. And it says fire. The Jachin pillar is fire. Huh. I have no proof of how the, the boy died. Maybe he just died in childbirth, but I just find that a little bit weird, spiritually weird, that uh, in the Old Testament they would pass their children through the fire, sacrifice their children to pagan gods, Moloch and things like that, through the fire to get uh, spiritual powers. Hmm. You say, oh, come on, brother, you know, this is just going too far. Stephen Anderson does not abuse his children. What in the world are you talking about? Well, I have a very interesting video for you to watch. I'm going to play it right now. And uh, it's Isaac Anderson being interviewed by some pervert, sodomite, uh, transgendered, whatever thing. And um, he's talking about the fact that when this whole thing came out of them doing this weird texting back and forth, what Steven Anderson did, how he came in and uh, corrected his son, and you'll hear it from his own words. Here you go. Well, and you, you mentioned that there were some messed up things you went through. Are there any of those that you'd want to talk about? I mean, just excessive physical punishment, more so. For example, the group chat, when he said he beat us, uh, he definitely was not exaggerating. Um, the good news is, I don't know if you remember, my father's not a very large man. He's about 160 pounds. So he definitely, it wasn't for lack of trying. He didn't, I didn't get injured or anything. So basically what happened was I was sitting at the kitchen counter on like a wooden bar stool, basically. And when he heard about this, I was sitting at the counter. He walked in through like the front door. I didn't hear him come in because, you know, there's a bunch of kids, kids coming in. He basically like ripped my chair backwards. So to crash, like a chair shattered. It was like, it was like a WWE style entrance, basically. He made his entrance and just started kicking and stomping me into the floor. He said he was going to kill me at the time. Um, he kept trying to provoke me to fight him because I think he was, it was only me and him there. Like no one, none of the kids were around for some reason. I forget where they were. They were at the park or something. No one was around. In hindsight, I believe he was trying to provoke me into, like, say, bloodying his nose so that he could, if he sent me to the hospital or killed me, he could claim self-defense. So, which obviously I do jujitsu and kickboxing. I would break him in half if I ever fought him. I didn't care, though, because, he, as I said, he's not very big. Despite him stomping and kicking and trying to slam me into the tile and concrete floor, he couldn't cut me, couldn't do anything because he doesn't. he's not that big or that strong. I can bench press more than he can squat. So he's uh, it, it, there wasn't really much he could do to actually like seriously injure me or hurt me. But it wasn't for lack of trying. He absolutely tried. He, he failed, but he absolutely tried to beat me senseless. Absolutely. Were there other points in your childhood where you had done stuff like that? Uh, absolutely. So Solomon, if he gets a fresh haircut, he's inside his head. Like I forget which side it is, but on the side of his head, he has a about an inch long scar on the side of his head. That was because one of his bum church members reported Solomon for watching YouTube, um, snitched on him basically. I think it was their deacon just said, oh, you know your son's watching YouTube or something. And there we lived in an old house time built in the 50s. So it had these like, you know, those stone windowsills where it's like pure concrete. 
and Solomon had his head grabbed and his head was like smashed like a melon over it and it split him to where you could see his exposed skull underneath the bone like underneath the skin it split him to the bone and he's permanently scarred on the side of his head it's underneath his hair so you don't you can't see it all the time but he has a scar because Corbin Russell snitched on him for YouTube and he got his head smashed over a windowsill like a concrete windowsill there was absolutely stuff like that we also used to get beaten with an electrical cord which it's hard to describe how bad that is because it's really light and whippy but it has like you know a copper core or whatever and that would basically leave you bloody like you'd get beaten bloody with one of those he absolutely lives up to his preaching when it comes to beer goods i strongly disapprove of that i think that's excessive it's barbaric it's inhumane but that absolutely happens and i guess uh you know talking about like the incident with solomon were you there did you see that happen uh i don't i believe so kind of i think i was around but i wasn't in the house like i was in the other room when he got his head smashed but i did see him bleeding all over the place because he was not given any medical care whatsoever he was not taken to the doctor for that so i remember seeing him outside because then they promptly made him go like do yard work in the heat or something he had like blood running down the side of his head and, like his whole shirt was covered in blood he was because obviously seeing someone gets their head split it bleeds pretty badly so yeah he was he was bleeding all over the place from that um i don't think i saw him get his head smashed though no but I, 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 I heard about it. Like he told me. And did your, did like from, from that or from any other incidents, like where people were beaten bloody, did your father ever, you know, console them later or show remorse over it? Absolutely not. Not only did he not ever show remorse, I'm pretty sure he doesn't even remember. Like I bet if someone asked him about this, he's going to completely deny and go, I never did that. He has no memory of this because to him, it wasn't as big of a deal, obviously. So he probably he would probably truthfully say that never happened because he truthfully does not remember smashing Solomon's head over a concrete windowsill for watching YouTube. Um, he probably has no recollection. Just another day at the office for him. Uh, but obviously Solomon w would remember. I mean, it's the side of his head's permanently scarred from that. Just unreal. Um, I believe in spanking a child. No question about it. It's the Bible way. It's how I was raised. It's how we raised my son. Um, that's how he's going to raise his son someday. It's an important thing to spank a child. But you don't draw blood, okay? If you're drawing blood, you're doing it wrong, all right? Um, you're not supposed to be making your child bleed, smashing their head against a windowsill and things and knocking them on the floor and kicking and hitting and, you know, uh, you're losing control of some things there. At that point but see Steven Anderson comes out of the whole Jack Hiles cult um, and the Jack Hiles cult they had uh, Combs Dr. Combs or whatever there uh, and he was beating his daughter Esther terribly uh, Joe Combs is what his name was you can watch my thing on Jack Hiles to get all the information on that all the gory details I think she had something like 400 different scars on her body or whatever else they beat her with hammers and with chains and whips and you know all kinds of stuff uh, terrible. Um, but you see, it goes back. And like he said in the, the interview thing there, he said he probably doesn't even remember doing it. Yeah, that's because these people, they sear their conscience. I mean, I saw stuff with Anderson a long time ago, and I was kind of a, uh-oh, I think I need to warn people about this guy. But of course, they're very much anti-Jew. The son there claims to be a Nazi, which is funny because... Um, he's a Nazi now and whatever, uh, professing and, and yet his father, Stephen said that he took a genealogy test and then he had Jewish blood in, in him. So, uh, I don't think you'd qualify to be a Nazi. Okay. Uh, you're not a pure German, All right? Sorry about that. Um, what <laughs> kind of doesn't work out too good there, but now I'm going to actually play a video of Rabbi Mordecai Kraft. And you are going to hear him openly say that Satan, or Satan, he says, um, is not a bad thing. It's, it's actually how we get corrected and whatever. So I'm going to play this video. You're not going to believe this one. Here we go. It seems, <coughs> according to the Kabbalah, listen tight. It seems according to the Kabbalah. I want to, I want to sneeze when I say that, you know, I get nervous. Sorry, you're nervous. When, according to the Kabbalah, it works like this. And again, I'm sharing with you some ideas, and I'm, I'm not an expert in it, but I'm going to show you the brief, the simple understanding I have. Okay. Um, he doesn't say according to the scriptures. He says according to the Kabbalah. You see the Ahab thing there? You see the Pharisaical thing? 
We overthrow the scriptures with our tradition. Where did your tradition come from? It came from the ancient occult world, going after strange gods, mingling their seed with unholy people, getting their gods and their practices and everything else. I'm going to show you my understanding of the Kabbalah. You might want to get an understanding of the scripture. Okay, let's watch a little bit more. We know that there's an angel that God created called the Satan. Unlike Christianity, the Satan is not a bad angel. He's not a rebellious angel. He's not an angel who has chosen to turn away from Hashem. Chas v'shalom. Can't be that way. Twice a day when we say, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, God is one. It means everything He created, He created. And he created for the good. God created the Satan. The job of the Satan, number one, is to test us in order that our free choice should be elevated, in order that we should have tests and pass the tests and thereby earn the reward God is going to give us forever. Paul's there for another minute. Um, the order or the job of the Satan is to test us, to test our free will so that we can have rewards forever and things and see what kind of rewards we can earn. You know, there's a weird thing in the occult and what you're seeing here in the, in the Judaism thing, and this is the Torah Institute, this is the Torah Institute, TorahAnytime.com, down in New York City, okay? What these people will do is they'll actually reverse Jesus Christ and Satan. So Jesus is the one that will test people. Jesus is the one that gives people free will, not Satan. And yet they'll switch them. So to them, Jesus is evil, Jesus is bad, He's a bastard child of Mary and, and whatever. The Talmud teaches that. And prostitution between Mary and a Roman soldier, that's what created Jesus. That's what they say. So God manifest in the flesh is the bad guy. But Satan, well, he's actually pretty good. He tests us and he tries to, you know, get us to, uh, he's going to give us rewards someday. <laughs> okay. Uh, you read the scriptures much there? I mean, and you don't even need the New Testament. It's in the Old Testament. How Lucifer fell from heaven. But I listened to another Jewish rabbi another time, and he was talking about the thing of, you know, Lucifer that fell, and he said, oh, you know, it's it's actually not a bad guy, and he's a good guy. So this is what they teach, all right? Can't say all Jews believe this, certainly not. You can't lump all Jews together. There are some that do not believe this way, but um, this one does. Let's watch a little bit more. Another job of the Satan, however, is a job <coughs> which is to keep the Jewish people on track. He's not betraying God when he does that. He's doing God's will. In other words, the whole purpose of this world is that we as a nation have to show the world that God exists. And there's no such thing as chance or coincidence. If we move off that job, this angel called the Satan has the ability to bring us back. And the Kabbalah says like this, when we turn away from God, we empower this force. We give the Satan more energy, more power. He's a neutral power. But when we turn away from God, we go down here, we give the Satan even more power, and that power he now has, God wants him to use to bring a fury against us, to bring us back. Again, because God loves us. You have to understand that. But the Satan is the agent of that work, and we empower the Satan by our moving away from God. Now how does the Satan do this job? He does this job through the means of certain nations. Certain nations which have chosen through their own bad free choice decisions have chosen very evil paths. The Satan will use them as his agents to bring the Jewish people back to Teshuvah. Okay, so yeah, the, the Satan is not bad but he just uses evil agents and people that are that hate the Jews to bring the Jews back because God loves the Jews. Uh, well, um, there's a degree of love there between God and the Jewish people um, because there's covenants that were made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and their descendants. Uh, so that's true, partly, but um, they're not going to die and go to heaven right now. Okay, If you die as a Jew and you've rejected Jesus Christ all your life, you go to hell. Um, there's no special thing there where you get to go to heaven. I mean, read the Old Testament. There were a lot of Jews that God just came down and just wiped them out, sent them, op literally opened up the earth and dropped them right down into hell. 
I don't think that's love. Okay? <laughs> and we'll be doing more with this guy in the future, this Rabbi Mordecai Kraft. Um, there's some really heretical things that these rabbis believe and teach. And if the Lord wants me to get into that stuff, I'll get into that stuff. Um, they are some screwed up people. And I think a lot of it is because they're mingled. A lot of these guys are mingled. They're not even pure Jews anymore. Um, so they, they're trying to come to the Old Testament. They don't even believe the Old Testament as it's written. They have to change it and rewrite this and redo that and whatever else. And, I mean, there, there's nothing in the Old Testament that would condemn the Satan or something. There's a few verses in there that would condemn him. Okay, um, It's not Christianity that teaches that Satan is bad. It's what the Bible teaches. But so yeah, you like that one, I'm sure. But let's go to Daniel chapter nine. Daniel chapter nine. This makes my head spin. Some of the the heresies that are out there that I've had to deal with over the years, you know, things that people say, and you just what? <laughs> you know. So Satan doesn't do anything bad. He just raises up bad people, and they work for Satan. But they don't really work for Satan because Satan's a neutral power. Okay, Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Well, that happened in the first century. No, it didn't. It happened before Jesus Christ showed up on the earth. No, it didn't. It happened when Jesus Christ died. This is speaking of Jesus here. No, it didn't. That stuff is not here yet. This is the new covenant that's coming in the future that's not here right now. Again, it's not the New Testament. or this, It is the New Testament right now. It's, this is not talking about the New Testament is what I'm trying to say. It's talking about the new covenant. Very important to understand that. Know therefore and understand that from the, from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build the Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks, the street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the, of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, the Romans, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. Jesus refers back to this in Matthew chapter 24, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. He's referring back. He's not saying it's about me. He's talking about the Antichrist that's coming. Even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Okay, Some of this stuff is going to go uh, into the time that's coming in the future. The book of Revelation is a sealed book. Jesus Christ is the only one that can unseal it. So there are some things we can kind of see right now in the church age looking forward, but it's going to be a really weird time. And that's why the body of Christ goes up to heaven before the Antichrist is unleashed in Revelation chapter 6. Revelation 4, John goes up. Revelation chapter 5, 24 elders and the angels round about the throne are there, representing the saints of Jesus Christ. We're there before the Antichrist shows up. Sorry, if you don't agree with that, you're wrong. Plain and simple. Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13, verses 3 through 9. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? who was able to make war with him. And there was given him unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Okay, I guess that's where I'm reading to. Um, again, it's the Antichrist. The Antichrist shows up. 
It's not some kind of a thing of it's Jesus and he has it all confirmed and whatever else, it's all done already. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4. Revelation 18 verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. And that's where I'm going to end this study. Um, this is kind of a, it's kind of like the Godhead doctrine. I was talking to my wife about this this morning, and I said, you know, the Godhead doctrine was not just me. This is not, you know, my doctrine that I created. I wrote this book here. A lot of the arguments that are in my book um, and that are in my sermons and everything else. My sermons have a lot more information in, in them than this book. Um, the sermons are available for free on YouTube, on my channel here. Um, a lot of those arguments came from the body of Christ. And so it started with me bringing up this issue of the Godhead versus the Trinity. The Trinity is not the same as the Godhead. They're not the same. Two different doctrines. Uh, and the Trinity and the, and the Godhead is not the same as modalism or oneness or whatever else you want to call it. And as the thing develops, the body of Christ starts to add more scriptures to it. People say, well, what about this scripture here? What do you think about this? And the Lord starts to show it to other people. Why? So that no man can glory in it. I can't say that this is 100% my work and I'm the first man to be shown this. And No, it's the body of Christ. People say, hey, brother, what about this verse? What about that? And that's what I'm looking forward to with this, kind of opening up this whole thing. And I believe as we are transitioning into this time of Jacob's trouble that's coming, we can see it on the horizon. And it's kind of like I've heard it said this way. You're going someplace and it says, um, you know, for instance, if I'm coming the, the back way from Holton down to Patton, I can see a sign when I'm driving through um, Oakfield. I'm just using local town names. You probably don't understand it, but just to <laughs> explain this. I'm driving through Oakfield, and I see a, a sign for Bangor, but it doesn't say Patton. Okay, it says Island Falls, you know, so many miles, I think it's 11 miles, and Bangor is 111 miles or 110 miles or something in Oakfield. There's a sign like that. Well, it doesn't say Patton, but I know that I'm going to be getting to Patton between Oakfield and Bangor. I'm not getting the whole way to Bangor. I'm going to be going to Patton. Okay, you understand? Well, the catching up of the body of Christ, as we see the time of Jacob's trouble sign, it's getting closer. Oh boy, it's going to be time for us to leave. Our exit will be coming, and the body of Christ is going to be called out. And it's not going to be that many people, by the way. Uh, Christianity is filled with lost people right now, especially. Um, few there be that find the way to eternal life. It's a very narrow path. But as we are approaching the time of Jacob's trouble, we're going to have to start tra transitioning away from the glory days, so to speak, of the church of Jesus Christ, not of Latter-day Saints, um, but the true body of Christ. Okay? We're going to start transitioning away from that and things are going to start to point more towards Israel and the Jewish people and this thing of the synagogue of Satan, the people that say that they are Jews and are not. All right, the papal Juden, in other words, and all that stuff and the Roman Catholic scheming and everything else. And the Roman Catholic Church is going to start to rise to open power again. And we're going to see that and we're going to see this new scheming with central bank digital currencies and all that stuff that's going to be there fully implemented in the, in the time of Jacob's trouble. We're going to start seeing it getting closer. And so um, I do not believe in the imminence theory of the rapture in that it could have happened in the first century. It could have happened in 500 AD or 600, 800, 1832 or something. I don't believe in that. But I do believe that when we are now in the end times, that it could be imminent. As the closer we get, it's going to be imminent. It's going to be a thing. There's no date given, so we're seeing the time of Jacob's trouble getting closer, so the catching up could be imminent at any time at this point going forward. Now, you can say, well, I have a gut feeling it might go another 10 years, another 20 years or whatever. Okay, but we can't prove that. And quite frankly, I'd like it to be imminent right now. Uh, I'd really like to go home. Uh, this world is getting so insane and so ridiculous that I'm just really looking forward to it and just saying, you know, oh, Lord Jesus, how long, how long? Ere we shout that glad song, Christ returneth, 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Um, like the old hymn says. Um, really looking forward to leaving this wicked world. And we will be. If you don't believe in that, again, you've been deceived, you've been lied to. I've preached on it for so many years. Um, but, you know, hey, you don't want to believe in it, that's fine. You're going into the time of Jacob's trouble. Congratulations. Endure to the end to be saved. Make sure you don't take the mark. You're going to get your head cut off and all that wonderful stuff. You're cool. I really respect you. Actually, I don't. Um, yeah. But uh, for those of us that are saved, after watching this video, I'm hopefully I've put some uh, new thoughts or maybe confirmed some old ones, and I'd like to hear about it. Let me know. I want to see it down in the comment section, and, and let's, let's work this thing out together. What do you think about uh, the symbology of Ahab and Jezebel? Jezebel's obviously in the end times. Uh, Revelation chapter 2, we read about that in one of the other studies. Um, and she is teaching people, and she is doing all kinds of other wicked things. There's a city that she's connected to. I mean, it, it all just ties together. And, and But I'd like to hear people's thoughts on the thing of when do you think the fifth kingdom started? Do you think it's a, a good theory to say that it started when they said we have no king but Caesar? And they killed their king? They killed Jesus Christ and then they took Caesar as their king? I personally think that that's probably when it got started. But I'm open to correction on that. Um, I think it's an interesting theory. Uh, <clears throat> this Kabbalistic kingdom thing that they're doing with all this rotten mess here you know the tree of life hmm almost should be the tree of the knowledge of good and evil uh, but you get all this satanic stuff over here that the Jews are messing with currently that's why the wrath of God's coming upon them and here you have the the father and the mother coming together and it's weird too because if you look at the you know their star of David their seal of Solomon whatever you want to call it you have the man, the upward pointing triangle, and the female, the downward pointing triangle. And you see these guys, you know, and they're sitting there and they're doing this, you know, the downward pointing triangle real, you know, like that, whatever you'll see people posing like that for photos. But you have the merger of male and female, male, female, coming together. The intimacy, uh, we'll say it that way. But there's also another way to look at that. The male and the female coming together in one person combining into a sodomite kingdom. Hmm. A man that's half man and half woman. A woman that's half manly and half feminine. I don't know. I'm just a dumb preacher that doesn't have any kind of education. What do I know? <laughs> uh, education blinds your eyes a lot of times to what's really going on. So that will be it for this study. And uh, like I said, I'm looking forward to really hashing this one out and um, seeing what's going on with people, what they, what they think about it. So I'll uh, see you in the next video. I have a bunch of things I need to get done here and going to be restructuring our office here at some point in time. I'm probably going to be moving out of this office and moving to a different one in a different room. Uh, in the place here and and uh, we'll see I have a lot of work to do this year now that we know that Wolfton's not going to be coming to the area that's going to make some decisions happen for this area for us so uh, a lot to pray about a lot to to do but we just want to thank you again to all those out there that support this ministry again understand the purpose of supporting a ministry is you see a ministry they're doing great work for the Lord you say I want to have a part of that ministry in terms of I will support them so that they can continue to do the work and what you don't see by the way you don't see my wife in many videos because she does a lot of the research for the videos I wasn't even into the whole thing of what the the Jews have been doing all the financial scheming and everything else and the Lord's been showing her a lot of that stuff and it's blowing my mind what they have been involved in and, and, and again I don't look and go oh there's Jews I hate those stupid Jews Israel's ah. Not at all. I look at it and I just think, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, these people. All the world should be looking to Israel and saying, there's the God of Israel. I want to know that God of Israel. They don't look that way towards Israel. They look and they say, what a genocidal bunch of crazy people, you know, and whatever. And I'm sure that there are Jews in, in Israel that are saved. 
I'm not some stupid nut that thinks that all Jews are, there's no such thing as a real Jew, but, you know, all that stuff. I'll be doing studies on that in the future, this whole anti-Jew thing and whatever. But um, it's been a great vexation to me, this thing of hearing about all the evils that these Jews are involved in and understanding the wrath of God has come upon them to the uttermost. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be bad for those people. And my wife does that research. My wife does a lot of that study. Uh, we buy a lot of books. Um, you know, stock up on a lot of materials and things. A lot of the information comes from offline sources. I try to bring stuff together, show video, and it takes time, brethren. And as Oliver, our son, gets older, you know, he takes time as well. We have to spend time with him and, and teach him things and homeschool him and, and everything else. We have a lot to do. But you see this ministry, you see the effort that goes into the videos that I do. You see things and you say, you know what, I want to see Brother Brian get out to more people. You can do that. There's free ways to support the ministry, and that's liking, subscribing, sharing the videos, um, putting links to my videos all over the place and whatever. Um, YouTube just buries this channel. YouTube deletes people's comments, the whole thing. They'll unsubscribe you. Uh, there's an active effort ever since I've been on YouTube to really shut this channel down. And you can ask anybody out there, when they mirror my videos, YouTube will go after their channel every single time. So um, do what you can to help promote this ministry. That doesn't cost you anything. But when you see, according to the scriptures, you see a ministry that's doing well, you, you know, Paul says, not that I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. What is that talking about? He's saying to the Philippians, you send money to me to help meet my needs so that I can do the work of the Lord so that it will make fruit come to your account. So you get up to heaven, you say, I'm sorry, Lord, I had to work all those years, but I supported good ministries that got things done. They bore fruit. They changed lives. I saw that you were working with that preacher or whoever to get truth out. And I want part of that ministry. I want to be able to show up at the judgment seat of Christ and be able to have rewards along with that brother that did that work. That's the whole point of supporting a ministry. And I'll tell you right now, there aren't that many ministries left. And that's a real grief to me. A very big grief to me. I wish that there were a lot of ministries that I could support, even with my money, and say, okay, you know, here, I'd like to support this guy or that guy. There's not many. There really aren't. So to those of you that do support this ministry, thank you. I really do appreciate that. And of course, the most important thing of all, which is also free, is prayer. Um, <clears throat> the spiritual attacks that, that we go through are absolutely ferocious sometimes. Um, talk about you know having your name cast out as evil. That's happened quite a bit. That's not really a spirit. I mean, it's kind of it's the devil spirits inspire these people to attack us. But um, <clears throat> and you'll get the same thing when you get into ministry. So again, I'm telling you this stuff too, so that you understand what to look for if you decide to serve the Lord full time. But uh, the spiritual attacks that happen, just weird stuff. I'm walking around and all of a sudden I can just feel, okay, something does not feel right. And I just start to feel that spirit of oppression on me. I don't know if people are putting hexes on me, curses. I don't know what's going on. Um, no idea. And, you know, people have threatened us multiple times. There's been attempts made on our lives. And, uh, you know, just weird physical things just pop up. Like I said, the, the thing on my eyelid the other day, it's thankfully it's gone down now. I can actually see without walking around like this, you know, one eye half shut. Um, but I've had all kinds of weird just physical ailments and nightmares and all kinds of good stuff. So, um, and I'm just going to continue. I'm not going to quit uh, as long as I can. And so thank you to everybody out there that does support us. Okay, I always like to try to say that because, again, Something else I want to talk about real quick here, um, and that is the phases of this ministry. Back when I first got into ministry, I don't think I have the, any of the DVDs in here. I think they're all out in the hallway there. But I first got into ministry, I started to produce DVDs. And I sent them around to Bible Baptist Bookstore and Tex Mars. He was still around at the time. I sent it to Chick Publications, Sam Gipp, Gail Ripplinger, uh, I think Ken Hovind even or something. And only one person got back to me and that was Gail Ripplinger. 
and she sold my videos on her website for a while and we just I don't make DVDs anymore so she said okay I'll stop carrying them um, there was no hatred or friction there between us and whatever else so just I went my way she went you know continued her thing and um, but I really appreciate what Gail did for me over the years selling my DVD helping to promote you know the ministry and that was 2007 when I got into that and then um, I got on YouTube and I started to do that and I realized you know I need to do something to get my name out there to just let people know hey I'm not you know some dumb bunny I have done a lot of research I have done a lot of study I want to really defend the King James Bible that was my initial you know goal for the ministry that's why it's King James Video Ministries and so you know the YouTube channel started to do well and people you know I was doing a lot of videos on the King James Bible on the on the Bible version issue that's what most of my early stuff was but people started to ask questions about other scriptural studies and so I started to do that and it led into this preaching ministry preaching and teaching the Word of God and God has raised me up for that purpose to get some really interesting studies out there to start conversations is what I want to do and most of them they can't handle the things that I've that I've preached because their tradition is too powerful. They hold their traditions above scripture. Their church building is more important than what the Bible says. The Trinity is more important than what the Bible says. All the different things. And so um, I've just tried to get the truth out there. But I knew there's going to come a point in time when I'm just not going to be able to handle this whole thing myself. And it's really difficult for me to be able to hire out you know, answering emails or whatever else. I can't really have anybody else do that for me. I have the brother that uh, takes care of my website. Really appreciate that. Um, that was always kind of a struggle for me because I'm not that great with technology. I can do some of it, but it just usually irritates me. Um, I'm a Gen Xer. What do you have to say? You know, <laughs> uh, not real great with new technology. But so I have that. But in terms of the actual ministry, as time is going by, it's becoming just overwhelming for me, and I'm having a hard time. It's really struggling with it, and trying to get back to people, and you know, I mean, just piles and piles of letters. I've got letters over there. I've got letters. There's a couple more there. There's a whole, you know, stack of letters here, you know, like that. People send me books. Uh, guy sent me a this book here and um, the perfect word of God destroying 101 supposed Bible contradictions sent me these books you know, he sent me another one and I didn't even have time to go through it yet it's over there I mean it just makes my head spin and so it's kind of I liken it I think I might have said this in another study but it, I liken it kind of to a, a medical station on a, out on a battlefield and you look and you say which ones are critical well, there's a guy who has a bullet in his leg. Well, okay, that's bad. I have to get the bullet out, but um, is it stabilized? Yeah, okay, it's stabilized. Well, this guy came in and he's got, he took a bullet to the head and he's bleeding out or something. Well, I have to, that's more important than this over here. And you have to go through this whole thing. And I get people that, that in all kindness and honesty, they're saying, you know, hey, brother, how you doing? And whatever. I appreciate that. But it's getting very difficult, if not impossible, for me to answer people back anymore. Just because of the stress of, you know, just everything that we have going. So, um, I do hope people understand that. It's not that I'm trying to be rude or I'm just, I want your money and I don't care about you personally. That's not, that's never been the issue. Okay, if I wanted your money, I'd be preaching like Joel Osteen or something. Um, I preach very controversial subjects that turn most people away. I'm not after people's money, trust me. So, um... Just wanted to explain that really quickly. I've been really feeling a burden to say that and just get that out. Um, I'm, I'm really going to have to cut down on emailing. And if people want to send me things and say, hey, brother, pray you're doing well. Um, hey, I have some video link here. Watch this. Check this out. You might be interested. Or, or check out this website or check that out. You might want to do a sermon on this. Or could you do a sermon on this? I'll try to get... You know, okay, I can maybe do that. I can add it to the list of things I have to do. But it's getting very busy. Um, very busy to the point, like I said, where I can't get back to people. And, um, you know, I, I remember years ago I used to do emailing back when I only had a few hundred subscribers. And 
and I spent four hours on an email. Never forget that. A guy from India at the time, a young guy, just going into college over there, and he had a bunch of questions about the Bible. And I spent four, four hours just typing out this thing, and it was just huge email. And uh, he really appreciated it, but as time has gone by, that has gotten less and less and less, and it, it got to the point where I was getting hundreds of emails a day, I think even over a thousand sometimes, and it, okay, I can't do this anymore. And so I had to say, no more emailing. And then it was okay, the post office, now I'm getting letters that I can't get back to people. I mean, how do I, how do I go forward? Um, I don't know how to go forward from this, uh, other than just to produce videos and bring them out and people can enjoy the videos. If you uh, feel led of the Lord to support the ministry, thank you. If you don't, well, okay, whatever. Um, just make sure that you're doing something for the Lord with your money before you go home to meet him. So, okay, I've rambled long enough. But I hope that these studies have been a great blessing to you and a great reassurance. The end times are not about the church of Jesus Christ. It's about the Jews and the Catholics. Israel and Rome working together, they conspired to kill God manifest in the flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're going to pay for it in a very big way. Um, because when they rejected Jesus Christ as their Messiah, they had to go their own way. They had to conspire, and they're trying to get Naboth's vineyard. Ahab wants it, and Jezebel's going to try to help him to get it because she has a vested interest in it. And uh, the answer is uh, no. They're not going to get it. Uh, Jezebel, she's going to be destroyed by dogs, and they're going to eat her flesh and burn it with fire. And uh, Ahab, um, most of the Jews in Israel are going to be killed, but there will be a remnant that's there that will repent and that will realize we killed our Messiah. What a terrible thing to do. They'll come back to their land. They're going to have the thousand-year kingdom. The Lord's going to judge them and take them into the kingdom. But uh, not going to be what they're currently shoot, shooting for. So, all right, that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.